Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today we are going to, well, we're going to assemble this guitar kit. We've got this guitar kit from Bad Cat Instruments. If you've been following me for a bit, you will have seen me unbox it. It looks really cool. It's made with this zebra wood. It's, uh, I'm pretty sure it's an engineered wood. It certainly looks like it. And I don't think there's a natural wood that looks quite like that. But very interesting stuff. Looks awesome. I think it's going to, that was screws. It's going to benefit from a, a nice kind of transparent finish. We might put a tint on it or something, but not today. Today what we're going to do is take a closer look at it, get it assembled and test it out to see how it sounds, how it feels and all of that kind of just right out of the box. I imagine we're going to have to do a fret leveling and polishing. The frets are a bit tarnished. That's fine. Um, but we'll take a look, check if we actually need to level them, polish them one way or another real quick and, uh, and get this guy done up. If we are fret leveling, I've got a bunch of tutorials on that, on fret leveling, crowning, polishing, so I'm not going to bother wasting your time with another one on that right now because it wouldn't be any different. So go ahead and check those out. Um, but let's take a look at this thing and see if it even needs it. Let's get after it. All right, first things first, we need to check and make sure that this neck is straight before we go ahead and check the frets for a level. Now, I'm gonna do that using a not straight edge. That's what everybody does, I think. <laughs> That's what everybody should be doing. Um, I am gonna, as I go here, tell you what I'm using and where it's from. If you're somebody who doesn't like that and, and says that it's a commercial because I'm telling you that, then I'm sorry, but look, I get a lot of questions about it. So that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna start with a, like I said, a not straight edge to make sure this is level. There are tons of companies that make really good ones. I'm gonna use one from Skyscraper Guitars because they're my favorite. But Crimson Guitars makes a great one. So does Solo, Philadelphia Luthier. They've all got good options for that and you can find them all over the place. I just really like these orange ones. Okay, because they're tapered and everything. Um, this guy needs to be loosened off a bit. So we're gonna loosen this truss rod slightly. I'm sure I don't need to explain righty tighty lefty loosey to anybody, but if you loosen it, if you tighten it, it pulls it into a bow. If you loosen it, it lets it relax this way. So we'll do that. We'll give it a little press to make sure any tension in the wood is released and we'll test her again. A little more. Shouldn't take much. All right, there we go. So this is nice and level now. Now we can check and see if our frets are level, which means checking for low spots using a fret rocker. Again, I've got skyscraper guitars here. This one's got a string height gauge on it too, which is kind of nice. All right, and we just, this has several different sides for the different gaps in the frets. Use the smaller ones as you move along, right? And just try and wiggle it and see if anything wiggles so that you know if there's a low spot. These are actually all level so far, so that's nice. And surprising, actually. No offense, bad cat guitars, but a lot of these less expensive guitar kits come with a need for some substantial fret leveling. Okay, well, that's surprising, um, but a good surprise. They are level. There are some spots with a little extra wear on them, so I'm just going to Get, quickly give these a little bit of extra crowning work and then uh, and a quick polish and we'll go from there. I guess a quick little comparison might make sense. So I'm not sure if I can really show you this, but there's some, these edges are very, they're very angled off, which I don't like. I like them rounded a little bit more, but I can't undo that. That's filing that's done. There's kind of a little tapering at the end here and they're kind of a bronzy color. They're just not polished very well. So I'll be back shortly and, uh, and we'll take a look at what it looks like after a little bit of work. All right, well, hopefully you guys can see the difference here. That took about five minutes, but that's because I've done this many times. Nice and shiny, polished, better color, better crowning. And we're good to move on from there. It'll be nice when we go to actually do this, I'll do some comfort rolling on the edge and all of that, but we don't have any don't have any fret ends sticking out or anything. This, this neck's actually in really good condition right out of the box, which is great. So 
let's get to work on some actual assembly, shall we? So my opinion on this guitar will come as no shock to anybody. As far as I'm concerned, if you're actually doing this, you're going to need some upgrade parts. Like we've got cheap, cheap plastic nuts and stuff like that on here. Um, obviously a cheap bridge, but you know, you're going to need some upgrade parts. You're going to probably want some, you're going to want to do some comfort rolling on the neck. You're going to want to put a finish on it. Of course, you're going to probably want to change up the carves a little bit because we've just got this standard kind of 30 degree flat roll off here and then uh, pretty minimal belly carve. But the objective today is to just see how it looks kind of straight out the box, straight out of the box. So we're going to do, we're going to just go ahead and do an assembly. Now this is only held on here with two screws right now. We have the rest of them, of course, in our little bag here. So I guess I'm going to take this up and see what it looks like underneath just to be safe. I don't think there's really anything that we're going to play around with under there, but we'll take a quick look because it'll only take a second. So let's do that. And honestly, I'm not sure. I don't think they've pre-drilled the rest of the, the holes here for the pick guard. So actually, before I go any further, I'm going to mark those off so I can drill them at the same time. For that, I'm just using an awl, it's called, just a, a little spike basically got this from canadian tire it's a cheap one you don't need anything fancy for this but yeah they haven't pre-drilled these at all so we'll add our holes in at the same time so i'm not just trying to fire screws directly into engineered wood i don't like the idea of that too much We'll need that after for the output jack plate as well, so. Now, if you can, one thing that's nice to have handy when you're doing this kind of work is one of these little magnetic bowls. Um, most people are probably pretty good at keeping track of their stuff, but I find that that makes things a lot easier. We'll take a look under here. I don't want to play with this too much if I don't have to. So, I mean, we've got exactly what we'd expect. One of these cheap plastic switches, which is fine. Small, inexpensive pots. And small, inexpensive pickups. Uh, again, if you're upgrading all of this stuff, then there are other steps you'll probably want to take, like shielding this. But for now, not too worried about it. I do find myself wondering where this ground wire is supposed to come through. There doesn't appear to be a hole drilled for it. So let's get our pilot holes done for the guard first, then we'll drill our hole to get to the back. These are just little guys. We don't have to go very far. You don't want a whole lot of screw sticking out, or sorry, bit sticking out of your drill because these small ones bend and break too easily. All right, now we don't need a huge hole to go feed a wire through there, but uh, we do need something. Huh, look at that, I stand corrected. It's, it's already been done, it's just in a place that I didn't anticipate. All right, next let's get the output jack put in place here. Just to make sure that everything is spaced out reasonably well, I'm gonna put the pick guard back where it goes. So I don't to be safe yep no issues there whatsoever so we'll get that guy marked out and while we're drilling holes let's get the strap buttons put in as well or drilled in at least so we want one right down the center here this is actually really easy so i often just end up eyeballing it but you don't have to, it's probably safer to mark it out. And then right on the end of this horn here. Oh, that's a little low. There we go. All right, so we've got, I think everything that we need drilled now drilled, we've got everything we need marked, now marked. 
so we can get going on the little bit of soldering work we have. Let's get the pick guard in place. So we need to feed the ground wire going into the claw cavity, which is on the back, and then hot and return. Of course, you need to go into the output jack cavity. Pretty easy, so that's there. Get the guard in place. Pull this guy through so that the extra cable's out of the way. I'm gonna feed it back up through the bridge so I'm not sitting the guitar on it, possibly leaving a dent. Piece of cake. We'll get this screwed in place so that we don't have to worry about it anymore. Get all my screws ready to go in here. Maybe turn the torque down on your drill if you're using a drill like I do. You certainly don't need to use a drill. You can do it by hand, and in fact, you should do it by hand, but who's got time? Um, so we'll get this fired in. They also make little drivers, like screwdrivers that are powered that are low torque and smaller and easier to control and aren't drills. So that would be a smart thing to own if you do this a lot. But I do this a lot and I don't own one. So there we go. Okay, all clear. Before we start adding more stuff, we'll get our soldering work done. So, do this the easy way while all this stuff is fed through the front. I just started to push that to the back. That is already stripped enough, so that's convenient. We'll get these two stripped a little bit more. Now, while my iron is warming up, which will only take a minute, I'm going to go ahead and screw the neck in place so that I can use it to prop the guitar up while I do my work on the back so I'm not worried about pushing down on any of this stuff. So we've got our neck plate here and our four screws. Pretty typical stuff. This is obviously not meant to hold it like this, but I'm just, because I've got the guard on, I'm just putting it like this for the moment. Okay, so the screws seem to be pretty loose through the body, which is good, that's what you want, and tight into the neck. That helps it suck down a little bit tighter, which is gonna be important on this one because there's definitely some extra space in this neck pocket. And in fact, what you'll wanna do as part of your actual build on one of these when you're not just testing it like I am you'll want to probably drill out the holes in the body slightly more so that the screws can go through that freely <laughs> we got the plate backward oh yeah pay attention Brad I'll cut it out with the sped up sound effects because pretty much everything in the video from here on out is going to be sped up. Uh, I wanted to get the entire assembly done in one reasonable length video and then we'll do the demo in a subsequent one. So I had about 56 minutes of total footage on this including all the stuff you've already seen and uh, yeah we're cranking things up here now. So I've got my wires I fed them all through the front even though of course one of them goes to the back tinned them all, tinned the two leads on the jack, and now of course I am running my red wire to hot, which is the tip, and the white wire to ground, which is the sleeve, and that's it. That's all I needed to do for the output jack, so only took a couple minutes. Uh, as I said, 56 minutes of total footage, meaning I basically put this entire kit together in under an hour, including all the chatting we did at the beginning. Pretty, pretty good, pretty concise. Now I'm getting the claw installed, so I put that against there, marked those holes, and then drilled them, and I have to solder to this. This is where that grounding cable goes. So there's a bit of a coating on this, particularly on these cheaper ones. That's why you saw me sanding it first, and then I really cranked up the soldering iron, and uh, yeah, now I'm soldering to it. <laughs> takes, it takes a fair bit of heat. You will have seen a little chunk just come off there. That's because it wasn't hot enough, so I had to heat it up add some more and uh, and then get my wire hooked up. Pretty straightforward stuff, you just need a decent soldering iron for it. I do 
everything with the drill here. Uh, you may want to do it by hand if you're relatively new to this. I'm not, so I've got my torque down on the drill and I'm just firing the bridge in here. Um, you don't want to crank these down too hard. You want the bridge to have a little room to move. Then I go and put the springs in. With with this sped up, it's going almost faster than I can explain it. <laughs> Pretty easy though. Put the springs in. Uh, the springs were actually a little small, not not in length, but the uh, the loop was a little small, so I had to spread that out using some needle nose pliers. And once that's in place, I can go ahead and put the back plate on. This isn't pre-drilled either on this model, so I go ahead and mark those out with the all like before and do my small pilot holes, and then I can go ahead and get this thing screwed on there. And you know that's that's most of it. We've got we've got most of the guitar assembled at this point. We're kind of just doing a few remaining steps here. It, it, this really moved fast, and it felt like it moved fast when I built it. But uh, yeah, when you speed it up anywhere from 300 to 600 percent, it really moves fast. So uh, next up, we'll get the tuning pegs put in. I've got a little socket on a short screwdriver that I use to finish these off, and I put my kind of tab ends on them vertical so I can make sure I've got them lined up properly and that's kind of it for this like it's it's pretty straightforward there's a spot in the back where you can screw in most tuning pegs I can't remember if this one has it or not um, but on a mock-up assembly like this I don't do it apparently I eventually decided I needed to do this with a drill because it was even faster so I started doing that with a drill don't do that it's ridiculous but but I did it and it worked just fine so hey maybe do um, I got the strings passed through here. I do this all with the guitar on its side if I want to do it quickly so that I have all the strings ready to go and through. And then I'm also going to use my drill to wind the tuners, um, which may seem ridiculous, but it worked really well as well. It's fast, and unfortunately I position my drill directly in the line of sight of the camera, right in your way. That was ridiculous. I didn't realize it, but anyway... Uh, that only took a couple minutes as well. You still got to stretch the strings after, so this isn't like a full setup or anything, but we'll get it all assembled. You can see how it looks. Once the strings are on, that's when I do the string trees, not before. Um, the reason for that is I need to see where the strings are sitting so that I can make sure I get this nice and centered on them, and this is the easiest way to do that. I just go ahead and bridge the gap between the strings with the string tree, with the screw in place, and then drill it in. Now. Uh, pilot holes for that would make sense, but I'm too lazy, so I didn't bother, and I don't find them necessary. And that's it. This actually feels kind of rushed, but I got the strap buttons in place, and this is what we're left with. A guitar that I'm actually, you know, pretty happy with, uh, especially straight out of the box. But we'll do some modifications, we'll have some fun with it, we'll put a finish on it. It'll be good. As always, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe so you can see what I end up doing with this kit. I think it's going to be fun, and... That's it. Again, hope you liked it. Thanks again. Have a good one, and I'll see you next time.